Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again, and I've got you another interesting DAX challenge. No further ado, let's do this. All right, I'm in Power BI, and that's where I have built a very simple data model. Let me just actually explain you the data and the model first before I start to talk about what do you exactly have to solve. So if you take a look at the sales table, pretty standard transactional level sales data, which is connected to my calendar table and my products table, two standard lookup tables, nothing that sophisticated. Now the sales table is something that I'd like to talk to you about in particular, uh, which is actually linked to my refunds table on the many side. Now let's just go take a look at the sales table. If I go over to my sales table, you're going to find that I have pretty standard columns here, the transaction ID, the date, the product ID, and the number of units sold, nothing that complicated. Now you're going to find that the dates are duplicated, right? Second January is two times, third of January is again two times, so on and so forth. That simply means that in a single day, these many transactions happen. So the sales data is a transaction level sales data. That means every single row is nothing but one single transaction. Now, there are instances when these transactions can get refunded and the customers can ask for a refund. Now, the customers can ask for the refund on the transaction multiple number of times till the time all the units that were bought were refunded. Let me help you understand what do I mean by that. So, if I go over to the refunds data right here, you're going to find that the only field that is common between the sales table and the refunds table is nothing but the transaction ID. And the transaction ID can possibly be duplicated. Let me actually pull up two transaction IDs which are duplicated. So if I just go over right here, take a look at this transaction ID and perhaps this one, you're going to find that these two transaction IDs are duplicated. That means the refunds for these two transaction IDs were asked on two different different dates and hence these two transactions are duplicated. So you can find that the first refund was asked on the 30th of June. Two units were refunded out of you know maybe uh, three or four or whatever number of units that were bought and the refund status is complete. And then the next one is on 30th July, uh, two units again and the refund status is pending. Now, what is it that you have to do in terms of solving this particular problem? You have to calculate what is the total amount refunded for all the transactions which are fully complete? What do I mean by that? If you take a look at this particular transaction ID, which is uh, 226J11, this transaction ID is not fully complete. That means one of the instance of refund is complete, but the other one is still pending. So I would not really calculate refund amount for this one. But if you take a look at the next transaction ID, which is this transaction ID, you're going to find that uh, there have been two instances of refunds and both of them are complete. So I am going to go ahead and calculate um, you know, refund amount for these transactions where all the instances of the refunds are marked as complete. All right, a couple of rules before we end this video. You're free to reshape or remodel the data using Power Query or DAX in case you want to create a calculated column to be able to help you solve this particular problem. So feel free to do that. The next thing is that you have to calculate the units refunded by the dollar value or the amount, which is where you would take the units and multiply with them with the price to be able to get the amount, right? That's the base calculation. The next important thing is that your calculation or your measure, which is your output, should be sliceable by any of the lookup tables. So currently, my lookup table is my sales table, my calendar table, and the products table, and any of these three tables which are connected to the refunds table should be able to slice your calculation. And just in case, if your solution is more complicated than just producing a single measure that can do the job well, I suggest that you do post the link to download your Power BI file so that everybody can take a look at your solution. All right, that's been it. Uh, if you have any questions around this, please feel free to drop in a comment and I'll be glad to reply. As always, you can download the data underneath the video description. And just like the way that we always do it, I'm going to give a big shout out to everybody who posts the right answer in the blog comments. Thanks so much for watching this and I'll catch you guys with the answers in the next video. Cheers.